service announcement. Since my dog has bit several church members. If you come see me, you blow the horn. If I don't know you're coming. Debbie took our dog to the vet. Thursday, I think it was. And the vet said, do not bring him back unless he's been sedated. <laughs> so you have been warned. He will bite you. <laughs> he even been a trooper the other day. Preacher, deacon's alike. <laughs> Psalms 100. <clears throat> Very short psalm. <coughs> Just five short verses. But it is the depiction of what we celebrate as Thanksgiving. Notice the Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Amen. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The Bible said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, Amen. and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. I'm reminded of a story about a real wealthy son who was in a habit of just surprising his dad with that very expensive gifts. One year he gave his dad a brand new Cadillac. The next year, he gave his dad a European vacation, and so it went year after year. But this particular year, he gave his dad the gift that he knew his dad would never forget. He found a rare bird called the translator bird. This bird could speak five languages. It could sing amazing grace in any key. And it cost nearly $100,000. But you know what? The son thought, my dad's worth every bit of it. So the bird was delivered by a week went past the son. He called his dad. He said, Dad, you know, I was wondering. I saw the bird was delivered. How did you like it? And his dad said, it was delicious. <laughs> You know, sometimes we have so much that we cannot see the true value in the things that we have. Amen. Amen. And you know what? That's the definition tonight of ingratitude. Come on. When you don't see the worth of the gift that God has given to you, then we have ingratitude. Amen. So God help me just for a few minutes. And I was thinking, preacher, you know what a devotion is? That's whenever the preacher gets up to preach, but nobody expects anybody to get saved. Come on, Come on, good. Come on preacher. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So, I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be quick tonight. I'm going to be quick. Let's, let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father God, Lord, you've been so good to us this year, Lord. We just thank you so much. It just seems like a few weeks ago, dear Lord, we stood here again. But dear Lord, and celebrated Thanksgiving of the last year. Lord, the blessings you have poured out upon this church and the congregation in the past year has just been amazing. There are those, dear Lord, that were sick and clinging to life this time last year. Lord, they're here tonight and happy and healthy and wise. And Lord, we just give you honor and glory for that. Lord, I ask you tonight as we look into your word, would you give us something tonight, dear Lord, that will go home with us. Something that will cause us to be grateful to the great God you are. Lord, we love you tonight. We praise you in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. In gratitude. 
Tonight I will talk to you about having or living in an attitude of gratitude. Come on. I have said it many times that attitude affects every part of your life. Amen. Attitude always affects your actions. Yes. If you don't have a good attitude about something, you won't do a good job at something. Amen. Uh, you know what? God expects us to have a good attitude about being thankful for the things He has given us. Amen. And can I say to you, uh, the first way we can show that we're thankful is by our praise. The Bible says in verse 1, to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Notice He didn't just say in one area of this world, but He said all ye lands. He wasn't just looking at Israel when He said this. But he was looking at the entire world that Amen. he created. Amen. Can I say to you that we are to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. In the Old Testament, there are 13 Hebrew root words found in 27 words. In each and every one of those 27 words are used primarily for joyous worship. Do you know that the attitude of worship should create a joy within us that cannot be explained. Amen. The Bible said that it's joy that's unspeakable and full of the glory Amen. of God. That joy that we get from worshiping God is something that we can't explain. Everything that uh, the Old Testament writers understood was that worship was to be joyful. Amen. Do you know what? Too many of us tonight come before God with our head bowed uh, so low that we can't look up and see how wonderful He is. You know what? There's a lot of things on the ground that we can focus on. But there ain't a thing on this ground or this earth that can help you if God don't help you. Amen. We need to lift up our praise to Amen. Him. The Bible said to make a joy for noise. The psalmist here, an unknown writer, uh, we don't know who wrote Psalms 100, but we know this. We know that he regarded the act of thanking God as the joy of his life. Amen. Can I say to you, we're to express our gratitude to the Lord in a loud and a public manner. Amen. The Bible said make a joyful noise. Amen. You know the word joyful there uh, gives indication that we are to... Uh, elevate our voice or we're to amplify our voice. Amen. We're to show that we're joyous by the loudness in which we speak. Oh. And the noise that we're to make. Man, you know, I, I got to looking and I found it unique because I've never done a word study on this, but here in Psalms 100, the word noise literally means to break forth with. Or to burst upon it. It is when someone is so full of emotion that they cannot contain their self. Amen. Now we wouldn't understand that outside of church if it wasn't for the sports that we had. Come on. Now we Come got on. the clips in the Come Carolina on. game uh, this Saturday. And some of us are happy and some of us are sad at the end of that game every year. But you know what you get at Mike's house? You get hollering and talking to the TV. Sometimes you get throwing stuff. Amen. Hey, we get uh, enthused by the game. Come on. Come on. Come on, Come on So I did a study on that word enthused. And do you know the history of the word enthused in the English language literally means to be possessed by God? Come on. I'm here to tell you tonight. The Bible says that we're to make a joyful, on, a elevated, amplified voice, noise to the Lord. We're to burst forth with such excitement that we cannot be contained. Yes, He is. Praise He is good. <coughs> We've seen that burst of excitement. You know what? We see it less and less in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I just believe tonight if you're possessed by God, you'll be enthusiastic. Amen. 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 Man, it's supposed to be a devotion. Not only are we thankful in our praise, but we're thankful in our service. The Bible said, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before.
or his presence or literally his face with singing. Do you know something tonight? That service is what God expects. He takes us three things in order to serve God. The first thing is humility. You know why the world doesn't want to serve God? It's a simple word called pride. Amen. The Bible tells us that pride was the fall of man. That's right. It was the fall of the angels. Amen. We understand tonight that in order to serve God, we cannot be prideful. We must be humble. And if you don't have humility tonight, you cannot serve anyone. Come on. Come on. Then we're to have faithfulness. Do you know what tonight? Service, the very word service implies faithfulness. Now I think of that word service and I think of the military. I spent six years in the military and I served my country. Do you know what? They don't give you the option. And Brother Donald, you can help me here. They don't give you the option of dropping out once in a while. Come on. I tell you what, really? every day that you're accounted for, uh, they take roll in the morning and they know where you are at night. Come Do you on. know what? Not only does it take humility to serve God, but it takes our faithfulness. Amen. Too many people today, especially this generation, they want to take Christianity and put it on like a coat. That's you right. know what? When it's cold outside that coat to keep you warm. When it's dangerous outside, Christianity will keep you safe. Amen. Oh, but we know you're doing pretty good. We want to take that coat off. We want to throw it over in the chair. Oh, yeah. We want to leave Christianity behind until we need it again. No, oh, my friend. If we're faithful, we're faithful. Amen. And then it implies activity. You can't serve anything without doing something. Amen. That's good. Amen. That goes hand in hand. If you're serving in some capacity, you're doing something. Amen. And trust me, if you're not doing something, you're not serving. Amen. Amen. So how do we show God that we're thankful? We do so with our praise, and we do so with our service. And I want you to know tonight, it's not in the ability that you have. God doesn't expect something out of you that he didn't put in you. Man, I'm going to tell you what, I look at Preacher Tim's family, and it almost makes you mad sometimes. Even his grandkids are singing and playing music. Man, the Lord skip hands us all together. <laughs> But God's never led me to sing. Come on, Come on. <coughs> He's not as concerned as what you do as with who you are. That's right. Amen. Because when you are who you are supposed to be, yeah. then you'll do the things That's right. you're supposed to be. Amen. 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 How do we show God we're thankful? We do so with praise. We do so with service. And then we show our faithfulness with our focus. Notice verse 3. It begins by saying, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. Amen. What is our focus tonight? You know what? You might do something for me and I might be thankful, but trust me, as soon as the thrill is gone, so is the gratitude. Amen. We get over things pretty easy. I, I tell you what, I try to help people. A lot of times I, I try to help people with anything I can do. And sometimes I can do things I didn't know I could do. But you know what? Would it not be foolish if the minimal things I can do for somebody, I expect an eternal gratitude for it? Come on. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. There's a man in this town uh, named William Sutherland. And I'm forever indebted to William Sutherland. And the reason is because he introduced me to my wife. Come on. And had it not been for William Sutherland, I never would have married the love of my life. Come on. 
I can be gracious and have gratitude toward Him. But you know what? God's done a whole lot more for me Amen. than even He did. Amen. 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 Know ye that the Lord, He is God. Thank you, Lord. My friend, God must be first in our life. Amen. That's sort of taking a different definition today. God's got to be first in our life as long as work don't interfere. God's got to be first in our life as long as entertainment doesn't interfere. God's going to be first in our life as long as the kids don't interfere. My friend, I want you to notice that our focus has to be on God if He's going to believe that we are thankful. Amen. Amen. Thankful with our focus. The Bible says it's He who made us. And because He made us, we are His. That's right. You say the preacher, sin came into this world. That's right. When man sold his soul to sin, God Himself bought it back Amen. with His own blood. Amen. And if you're saved today, He has to be your focus. Right. He isn't prominent. He has to be preeminent. Amen. Above all. Amen. So I ask you today, if we are His, the sheep of His pasture, what claim do we have to the life we live? What right do we have to our own life? No, my friend, I, I, I find it unique. I, I remember when we were raising our, ch our children, uh, you know what? My son, as big as he is, has never eaten a hamburger. He's never eaten a plate of spaghetti. I eat it for him. <laughs> <laughs> but you know why that is? It's because we lost track of something our parents didn't lose track of. My mama never asked me what I wanted. Come on, Come on, man. We found ourselves asking our children, what you want to eat tonight? What do what you want to wear today? They said, you know what? We could have made those decisions and saved a lot of arguments. Come on, yeah. You know what sheep never do? They never get asked by the shepherd which pasture they're going to lay down in. That's right. Which brook they're going to drink out of. Come on, Which path they're going to follow. Thank you. No, my friend, we show our thankfulness to God with our praise, with our service, and with our focus. He Amen. is God. Amen. And then forth. And some of you's already caught on. There's five verses, so there's going to be five points. <laughs> so we're getting close. We show our thankfulness with our thanksgiving. Amen. Man, I got to study in out verse 4. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Amen. Now in the Hebrew language, the word thanksgiving is the word tala. And the word tala comes from the word thankful, which is in the Hebrew the word yala. Now the implication here is what's important. Because we begin to understand that the word thanksgiving being derived from the word thankful means that we acknowledge God. Amen. Amen. But how do we do that? You see, being thankful, we acknowledge God for His works, creation, health, Amen. ability, Amen. His provisions. We're thankful. We acknowledge God. Amen. But what is thanksgiving? It comes from the word thankful, but it literally means an extension <coughs> of your hand. That's right. It means to extend the hand. Now, some of you going to get this really quick because we're in a free will Baptist church and we have not forgot what worship is all about. Come on. Amen. How do we acknowledge God with our thankfulness? We do it by extending our hand. Amen. When we extend our hands Amen. and we make that joyful noise Amen. unto the Lord, we acknowledge that He is God. Right. He is our focus. Amen. He is worthy of our 
our praise, Amen. we extend yes. our hand in worship. Yes. You know what? Whenever we thank and praise God with our hand extended, it's the same as confessing in 1 John 1 and 9. Come on. Man, preacher, I got studying this and it just amazed me. Come on, preacher. The Bible says if we confess our sin or we acknowledge our sin, God is just and faithful to forgive of all sin. By acknowledging our sin. Yeah. Here in Psalms 100, when we acknowledge God for who He is, God accepts our praise. Amen. In our worship. Thank you, Lord. Why is that important? Because when this psalm was written, the only way man could worship God was through the ark of the covenant. Only the Ark of the Covenant. They can worship God in no other way. But we as New Testament Christians can extend our hand in worship and be in the presence of God anywhere at any time. But I want to tell you, whenever we begin to show our thankfulness to God and we do so with our thanksgiving, you're not going to stay where you are too long. Because that kind of thankfulness has movement involved. What's preachers say all the time? You sit there like a bump on a pickle. Come on. I'm going to tell you what. According to what we just read in Scripture, when God possesses us, He gets out of us our praise and worship. To him. Amen. Now we're at number five. And this will be it. But there's three sub points to number five. The Bible says, For the Lord is good. Amen. How do we show our thankfulness to God? How do we show our gratitude? How is our attitude to be about gratitude? Notice with me, we are thankful through our goodness. The Bible said God is good Amen. and His love is eternal. His faithfulness endures through all generations. I don't know what you pass down to your children or what your parents pass down to you. There are some things that grandparents even pass down uh, to the grandkids. You know what? We pass forth good things to other generations. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Because if it's not good, then it's a curse. Oh, yeah. The Bible says we can bless them or we can curse them. Amen. And curses are bad things. And there's been a lot of people in this world that have had a namesake passed down to them uh, from a prior generation that didn't have good things about it. But my friends, whenever we take on the name Christian, all that changes. Because it doesn't get any better than Christ. Amen. Amen. The namesake of Jesus is the best namesake to have. Amen. And the Bible says, For the Lord is good and His love eternal. His faithfulness endures through all generations. Right. So here's why we have to enter His gates with thanksgiving and serve God with gladness. It's because we have to pass on what God has gave. Amen. We have to pass forward what God has gave. How do we do that? Three things, and I promise you I'm done. Turkey is in sight. <coughs> we have to live with awareness. Come on. You know, Heather sang that song. talked about the Statue of Liberty in the harbor in New York. And what the Statue of Liberty means to the world in search of a better life. Can I say to you tonight, America, I believe, above any nation on earth today, 
shows the blessings of God. Amen. Matter of fact, we have been greatly blessed. Amen. Do you know it's been calculated that if the size or population of the world could be reduced down to a thousand people in one city, that 46 of the thousand people would be Americans. And 954 would represent the rest of the world's population. Of those 46 Americans, they would receive half of the salary of all 1,000. And the 954 would divide the other half. All of them. The 46 Americans would receive a life expectancy of around 75 years. While the other 954 people that occupy the world would average around 40 years. The Americans, those 46, would have 15 times as many possessions per person as all the rest of the people in the city. And the Americans would receive more than their daily food requirements each and every day. While 800 wouldn't have what we would call a balanced meal. You know what? We have a great deal to be thankful for. Amen. 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 And all I came to ask you is be aware of that. Sometimes we get so caught up in our own reality that we fit and we forget God loves the world. That's right. Jesus died for the Amen. world. Amen. And every nation in this world is not as blessed as we are. Amen. Amen. Number two, not only should we live with awareness, but we need to take inventory. Do you know how much you've been blessed? Come on. Come on. You ever took a notebook out? And just started writing down how much God blessed you in the last year. You know, first and foremost in my life, when I was growing up, I never seen myself as being married and having children. And I certainly never envisioned myself with having a beautiful wife. I told you, my dad, the first time he met my wife, he said, son, you had to you leave. And for 30 years, she has proven that I'm out of the league. And I'm thankful tonight that God has blessed me with things I never imagined Amen. I would have. Amen. Amen. They told us we couldn't have children. And we got two. Come on. They told me 10 years ago I'd live two to five years. <laughs> and I'm pushing 11. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, if we just started writing down the things God has blessed us with, if we would take notice of them, if we would inventory our blessings, I believe we would have an attitude of gratefulness. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, when you're discouraged, you ought to think about your blessings. Remember that song, Preacher, Count Your Many Blessings? The first verse says this. <laughs> when upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has Amen. done. Amen. 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 So I ask you tonight, have you stopped lately and counted your blessings? And then number three, and we're done. If we're going to be thankful through our goodness, because God is good, we've got to be aware of situations around us. Everybody's not as blessed. Amen. We've got to take inventory and be mindful of what God has done. And then, my friend, we've got to take action. Let me tell you about the pig. One day he wanted to complain to the cow. Now this pig says, you know what? Everybody talks about how the cow has the kindest and most gentlest eyes. 
but nobody likes a pig. Oh, I know. The cow gives milk and cream, but the pig said, you know, I give way more than that. I give bacon, ham, mm. and they even pickle my feet. Why do you think it is that nobody likes pigs? And the cow thought for a moment, and the cow said, well, maybe it's because I still give while I'm living. Come on. Amen. Come on, brother. Come on, preacher. God has truly been good to you, and you're truly thankful, then I challenge you tonight. Find something that's good and do it for somebody else. <coughs> you see, we can show our appreciation to God by how we serve Him with what He has blessed us with. Man, I'm tell you what we've been blessed. Amen. 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 Come on, Brady. Sometimes we've been blessed so much that we become stingy and greedy. And we think, well, everybody's been blessed like me. But you know what? You want to impress the Lord tonight? Unclench that fist that you hold in blessings with so tight and give it to somebody else in need. Jesus said, when you've done it to the least of these, Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Anything. I'm not talking about just money. I'm not talking about abilities. I'm talking about time. I'm talking about helping bear a burden. Praying for one another. Doing those things that got us where we are today through somebody else's sacrifice. And I'm going to tell you what, we're here tonight. Not because we have an epiphany one day riding past the Liberty Free Will Baptist Church. Maybe you did. I didn't. But somebody prayed. Amen. And somebody opened their arms. And all I can ask is we do the same in return. Amen. And you know what God will do? When we take action. 